So this is your opportunity now to start plugging the comments with all your questions, please. We're all sales professionals, so let's not be shy. This is a great opportunity to tap the minds of these world-class salespeople. Um, and I'm just going to warm this up with a couple of questions uh, based on what I've heard th this afternoon. Um, just around prioritization, um, you know, many people are just entering their new financial year or planning to enter the new financial year. Uh, has anybody got any like very uh, top line tips of like how do you prioritize who to target in your territory first? Who'd like to take that? I feel like I got to take that because I talked about it a little bit. Um, Oh, can I just say it? You six cents? No, shut up. There's like a little devil on my shoulder. I got to shut up. Um, look, I think you've got to be led by the data, right? I think it is worth looking now to see where have you been successful for the past, in the past, which industries are resilient or doing well right now. It's like, hey, example for us is we know that like cybersecurity and, and, and security tech are really resilient and they're doing very well. So we know we can sell really well there. Um, so yeah, look at where you've been successful in the past, pick key industries. And if you do have any kind of intent data, speak to your marketing team about that. Look at that. See where you're seeing signals in the market that direct you to people who are taking in market activities and looking at things right now. Great points. Anybody else? I agree with uh, Liam. I mean, it's all about being data driven and knowing your ICP. I think this is one of the most important things, um, really focusing on your ideal customer profile and then also targeting the personas that uh, can really benefit from your solution. Because you usually know their pain or you have kind of an idea, but again, it's about genuine listening. So when you're then talking to them, really, really try to find out if uh, they agree with the challenges that you already know about. Um, but yeah, and also account-based selling. I think this is a really, really big topic this year as well. Amazing. Um, okay, so uh, there's you know a few comments in some of the talks around like uh, differentiating yourself and um, uh, standing out from the competition. Like you're all high performers uh, in the companies that you work for. I just like to know maybe you can reflect on this, like what's the one like personality trait that you think you bring, like that you're self-aware of, that you think people latch onto where they're like, yeah, I, I, like I like working with this person. The buyer likes working with you because of this. Like, do you have that top of mind where you think that's your superpower? That's what makes you really good. Who wants to hit, hit the, uh, the, the response to that one? I'll go, I'll go first, James, if I may, and then pass to the team. But um, it's not a superpower, but I, I something I always work on is just my listening skills. I think that's so underrated uh, and to be an active listener is much harder than it sounds. Um, so I constantly work on and um, I think people, it's the simple things like playbacks. Everything a, a, a prospect said to me, I then play it back um, just to make sure I've, I've understood. Just little things like that are really, really valuable to show I'm listening. Uh, I've been doing my friend relationships. I might be in a pub with a friend, you know, catching up and I'll play back everything. And um, to know that you'll listen to is really powerful and it just fosters uh, trust and transparency. Um, so I think listening skills is a superpower and something we all have to work on. Yeah, I agree. I agree with, with Rod on, on the listening. Um, the other thing I was kind of thinking when you think about superpowers for me is empathy because, of course, going back to medic, that the one thing that you want to really... I, is identify pain. And I think if you're empathetic to what that pain is, and then of course there are two types of pain, right? There is the business pain, but there's also your champion's pain. And it's about understanding the two of them. And then once you understand that and you're empathetic, then you can actually give a solution. Um, so that's what would be for me. I would, the only thing I would add to that is just being maybe more of an intern from an internal perspective as well being really authentic and be be you uh, and be I'm, I'm a very open person with in you know, my colleagues and my team and you know uh, explain why why you do what you do and what what motivates you and um, try and build a, an emotional connection with your team as such right because you you know 
road warriors, you're maybe traveling to clients a lot, you've got to build up personal relationships. And so, you know, I feel very comfortable in sharing why I do what I do um, with my colleagues. And I think that, that helps build a, a good level of understanding. Yeah, these are really good uh, superpowers. I would say one um, one of my best is definitely um, just being myself, as I mentioned before, being personal. Um, when I prepared for this uh, talk here, I was talking to one of my colleagues. And I was like, what What am I supposed to speak about, right? Because when you work in this, everything comes so naturally. Um, but what she mentioned is whenever I'm in a sales call and also my colleagues from marketing or whatever would watch it on chorus afterwards, um, it's kind of the... Uh, welcome to my crib. That's what she said um, about my sales processes. So that's how I try to do them very personal and I also share. I'm just myself. So what you see is what you get. That is my superpower. Nice. I'll finish this off. Um, uh, to keep it on the medic theme, Ali, uh, one I stole from Andy White. Uh, there's no traffic on the extra mile. I think about that a lot, right? So I think about how can I go the extra mile? And and to Rod's point, that's in business as it in is in personal relationships, right? That's where you're remembered. That's where you stand out. I kind of always try and charge myself. How can I go the extra mile? How can I do something else to get ahead of competitors, to stand out, to deepen that relationship? I uh, love that. Thanks for sharing. So we've got some good questions coming in. Please start pinging those along. There's a few hundred on on you on this call still so uh, also just to know when we wrap up the q a there'll be networking um so you'll be able to plug into that so this question is from hakeem and i'm gonna stick it up number one tip to get access to the ceo or cfo especially early in the process like how do you get to the top of the food chain any perspectives uh, I mean, for, from my perspective, it's just a quick one. Uh, it's important to build your champion, but a lot of the time the champion is sometimes not high enough to actually do that introduction, to, especially in enterprise, to a CFO or CEO. So I think it's, it's prospecting into, into them and using your champion's information to actually you know, communicate with them as in what the pain is. Going back to that medic, I'm big on the pain. Um, and once you communicate that to the CEO or the CFO, depending on what they are, because they might have different pains in the business, then you can, um, some, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit risky because sometimes your champion could find out and they might feel betrayed that you went, you know, over them. But you do get access to them. And if you can actually justify to your champion why, because this will actually make their job easier at the end of the day in selling your, your product or your solution, then it's all worthwhile. But maybe someone else has another, another tip. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I, would, I would say lead with the value and, and strive to find out what's most important for, us, for the CEO and CFO. So this has to be a calculated step. Uh, it has to be a step done very early in the process. So I like that, Hakeem, that that's you're doing the right things there. Um, I would, like I spoke about, you know, look, try and build a hypothesis and say, hey, this is what I think is important to you. Uh, I would also look to build the champion up. So um, explain who we're engaging with. And in my email to, to the CEO or the CFO, whoever the exec is, explain that we're engaging with James. And James is doing an amazing job. We love working with James. So if anyone gets forwarded an email via the CEO, right, they can only be happy because we're making them look good, right? But I think go with value, go with the hypothesis and build, make your champion look good in that email and uh, do it all the time. Do it as early and, and as often as possible. And make friends with the PAs. I think that's also a big trick. If the PAs like you, they're more likely to you know, set up a call with that CEO, so. 100%, great suggestions. Uh, Christian's asked, um, you know, he agrees with the value-driven comments rather than feature-driven, but he finds some prospects quite regularly just want to get into the nitty-gritty details of the features uh, in his field, haven't got the context, but, you know, do you ever find that where prospects are like, you know, just let's just get into it, um, you know, what, what do you actually do? And, you know, have you got a way of kind of like positioning the value and the outcomes that many of you mentioned in your talks? Yeah. I have a first um, question. Oh, who's, okay. Sorry, who's, um, who's Christian selling into? It sounds like it might be at a, um, a certain level with a focus on, uh, on the features and the nitty gritty. I would say work on 
their ability to get up the food chain um, be valuable and all the things we just mentioned about how you get access to the C-suite. Yeah. And what I was going to add as well is, is the three whys are so powerful then. You know, go back to revert to that. Why anything? Why are they buying anything? Why are they buying your solution? And why now? And also, because that ties into that kind of, again, talking about pain, I feel like this kind of broken record person, but it's um, it's going back to that. And then it's to say, well, yeah, you want all these features, but why? Right? Why do you need them? Oh, it's because I'm really, really struggling with such and such. And Oh, and then you can actually capture more information. Can I have a comment on that? There's, um, there's a great book on this, uh, which I think is called Selling Above and Below the Line or Selling Above the Line and Below the Line. So above the line is those conversations you want to have about value that you're going to deliver and ROI for the business or exact level conversations. And then below the line is all your product features and functionality and, and nitty gritty nitty gritty stuff as Christian calls it. So I think the first thing is just being aware of where you're getting pulled, right? You'll try and be above the line. You're going to get pulled below the line in those conversations. You just got to be aware of that and try and steer back background. Hey, we can, you got to spend time talking about below the line functionality. But one job that's inherent on us as sellers is to be able to bring that back and link it to above the line priorities. But I um, would highly recommend that book if you haven't seen it. All right, we're going to uh, make this the, the final question and then pop into the networking. Um, Charlie Cowan asks, what is your experience of getting back in front of customers in person during the sales cycle now? Um, and how are you encouraging them to meet with you and your team? How far down the process are you seeing it happen? So I guess those of you that are actually getting FaceTime, how are you doing it? When's it adding value? What's your approach there? Um, well, for, for me personally, I mean, we got a new uh, territory alignment this year. So that means that I'm the new AE for a lot of the accounts. So it's a, it's a great way to actually go and, and introduce them. I did find that, for example, last year, a lot of my customers were a bit hesitant to meet face to face because it was so easy just to do a video call. It's the easy thing to do. So I think now it's they're a little bit more open to that. And then having said that as well, sometimes if you're getting to know a prospect or a customer, a meeting might sound a little bit too intimidating, especially if they haven't agreed, for example, yet if they want to, they have a spend or they have a budget, et cetera. So if you say to them, oh, you know, you are in Holborn, I'm going to go to the Costa in Holborn on Thursday because I'm staying there because I'm going to go and meet such and such. Can I buy you a coffee? It's sometimes a lot easier and it's not as intimidating as to say, oh, yes, let's schedule a meeting. So that's my piece of advice. So my, my, my thoughts on this topic would be um, high impact meetings to be in person. So um, and at the, and the same point in the same breath at that beginning where you are building up your hypothesis and your understanding of their organization get people out of the office, take them for lunch, take them for a coffee um, and just have a conversation about their business. Um, and so, yeah, I think high impact meetings, kind of second half of the cycle, um, execs uh, and people from my, from my um, experience of the last year or two, since, you know, post COVID, people are up for meeting, right? If, if you do a good enough job in those early stages, right? If you're leading with value and you're bringing something to that conversation, and they start to build some rapport and trust, then my, my, my perspective is they're open to me. Um, so, and ask, just ask the question, but I'm in town, shall we catch up? I agree. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, I think, um, just to add from my experience being an enterprise rep, one of the things I, I, I love what Rod mentioned, and you know, I don't think enough reps take advantage of, literally be in their office, sit in their office, like, you know, have one meeting, Know that it doesn't matter what level of individual, but then when you're in the office, you're literally firing off messages saying, hey, you know, I happen to be in your cafeteria this afternoon. And the fact is, even if they're not there, they will respond. And suddenly you're just getting a lot higher engagement while you're multi-threading multi -threading accounts. Uh, and you're right, sometimes a meeting face-to-face, -face, especially now, can feel like a bit heavy and a bit lot going. So you do have to make it easy for an individual to feel like it's just it's not out of your way. You know, you're already in town, you're already in location, as Ali said. So great tips. Um, I appreciate there's lots of more questions coming in, but I want to get to the networking where we've got 15 more, 15 minutes left. Uh, so I just want to do a virtual round of applause for each uh, and every speaker um, that's contributed to today's event. Hugely valuable um, and really appreciate all your efforts in preparing for this. 
I have to say, I've been doing this for a long time. This is the best AE event that we've ever put together. So thanks very much um, for putting all the effort in. It's been superb. Uh, thank you all uh, also to our, our sponsors uh, for supporting um, and allowing us to, to build this community. And of course, those of you that want to learn more about the membership and joining uh, Rod or um, Ali in one of their circles, peer, group, peer accountability groups, helping you do bigger deals, get to the next stage of your career. Um, just let me know. You will no doubt be getting an email from me. Um, but thank you again. I'm going to close this live, but we can go into the networking. There's a little tab on the right. Speakers, I'll explain this in a minute. And literally, you just fire. Um, you should be able to fire into that area. Um, and there should be um, the ability to network um, from there. Um, so let me know if you can see that button. Uh, it should be uh, live now. And uh, I'm going to end the stream. So thanks very much, everybody, for participating today. Have a good one. Bye-bye.